All right, I am back with another video, and today we are going to be doing a build based around Flame Blade. Because I got to thinking, I'm like, I really want to do a build around a Summon Sword, and obviously I'm not a huge fan of Shadow Blade in this game, uh, if you didn't already know. Um, so I wanted to build something around Flame Blade, and then I got to thinking, does this certain mechanic work the way I think it does with Flame Blade? And sure enough, I was right, so I'm showing so I'm using this to showcase a pretty cool combo, but I still think this is quite an interesting thematic build that I wanted to show off. So the way I kind of see this person is, I, I'm not going to call this the Chosen of Shah or anything like that, but I definitely think this person is kind of like a kind of uh, Sharon style, like kind of, mm, not like a like a death worshipper but it's definitely kind of representing death perhaps the death of nature as we're kind of building this as a druid so it's more of like showing how fire and rot can turn forests into complete wrecks and like nothing oh, this is such a weird analogy but you get my point basically showing how fire and rot can turn a forest uh, even the most beautiful forests into the most haunted of areas and i and so i've called this the ghost flame blade since we're going to be combining flame blade with necrotic damage and creating something really really interesting at least in my opinion basically we're doing an edge lord build today <laughs> um so Starting off, we're going to be a druid. As much as I would like to start off with a martial class to be able to get that heavy armor proficiency, we need to get to Flame Blade as soon as possible. And we don't really need weapon proficiencies since um, Flame Blade doesn't require them. And this build is going to only use Flame Blade as its main weapon, as kind of as a challenge. However, I will be showcasing a dual wielding kind of option if you wanted to go that route, which may be a bit more powerful overall. But the whole point of this is to use Flame Blade. So. Going with a druid here, that's going to get us a couple of cantrips. I recommend Produce Flame and Guidance. This is just a generally good spell setup, as we're going to be getting a ranged fire cantrip, which will synergize with some of our equipment. And we're also going to be getting Guidance, which is just one of the better cantrips in the game for the dialogue options. Next up, we're going to be, let's have a look at our stats. We're going with a 14 in Dex, 16 in Con, 16 in Wisdom, and Charisma at 12. Dexterity, we're wearing medium armor, so we don't need it as high. Constitution, we want to be tanky, since we are going to be a martial fighter. Wisdom, we want as high as possible, so that uh, Flame Blade gets its highest damage, because Flame Blade uses your spellcasting modifier. And Charisma at 12, because it's going to affect some things we do. As for our proficiencies, take whatever you like here, it really doesn't matter. Uh, next up with Druid level 2, we're going to be choosing our subclass, and since I mentioned the Chronic Damage, you probably already knew where I was going with this. We are going with the Circle of Spores. This is going to give us Symbiotic Entity. Uh, for a Wild Shape Charge, until our next long rest, we gain a, a temporary hit points and have additional Necrotic Damage on our weapon attacks. This does work with Flame Blade, meaning now that Flame Blade will deal Necrotic and Fire Damage, kind of going into that Ghost Flame aspect that I was kind of talking about. Also, we get Halo of Spores, which, while we have Symbiotic Entity up, deals double damage, so 2d4 Necrotic. And you can use this as a reaction, so it's just a little bit of extra damage, for basically, for free. And we also get Bone Chill, which is a ranged Necrotic Cantrip. As for our spells, prepare whatever you like. I like having the Utility spells here, plus Fairy Fire to start off. So I feel like Fairy Fire could be flavoured as, like, a Ghost Flame of some sort. So I feel like it works quite well. Next up at Druid level 3, we're going to be finally getting what we're here for, and that is Flame Blade, meaning that now we have a Flaming Scimitar that we can conjure in our hand as a bonus action, but deals 3d6 fire damage. Now, Flame Blade is a little bit weird with the upcasting. It only gets a bonus to its to its damage every two spell slots, getting an extra 1d6 each time. So with the maximum level of spell slots in this game being level 6, uh, we only can get 5d6 damage total, but that's still pretty powerful for a one-handed weapon, especially one that doesn't require our concentration. So definitely want to pick this up here, and if you fancy that you don't really need Fairy Fire, Flaming Sphere, Heat Metal, or Hold Person are all really good options, but I'm going to pick Flaming Sphere here because I think it's quite fun. Next up, we're going to be wanting to multi-class straight into our martial class because we're going to be getting a certain feature that we need and also we want to get to extra attack as soon as possible because, um, you know, uh, sorry, my phone went off if you heard that, <laughs> because um, we're going to be wanting to get extra attack straight away because we are going to be a martial fighter. So even though we probably want this feat, I'm going to suggest we multi-class straight away and come back to it later. And we are going with Paladin. 
We want to go Paladin for a few reasons. One, we want more spell slots. B, we want a certain thing that only Paladins get. And C, our Oath of the Ancients or Oath Breaker uh, kind of subclasses here both fit really well with this build. Oath of the Ancients, if you want to kind of go for a more druidic aspect to it, kind of trying to like continue for maybe this is someone who goes into like maybe areas of nature that have lived long past their necessary lifespan and brings a swift death to start the life cycle anew that could be something this character does if you wanted to go over for the ancients but i quite like oath breaker because it goes into that kind of necrotic damage aspect which i think synergizes well with circle of spores so definitely want to pick up one of these two so go with oath of ancients and then if you decide you don't like it break that oath Next up a Paladin level 2, we're going to be getting what we're really, really here for. But before we get into that, we can quickly pick a Finding Style. And since we're using Flame Blade, we can grab Dueling. Pretty sure it works with Flame Blade, but it's kind of weird. Because Flame Blade is both a weapon and a spell. And I'm pretty sure Dueling works with Flame Blade. I'm pretty sure I did see like it, it adds a plus 2 to the fire damage. But you mess around with this, I could be wrong. If I am, go with Defense, since we're not going to be using anything else. And it would just give us a little buff to our AC. But I'm going to go with Dueling here for now. Uh, now we get three spells, and what we're really here for is Searing Smite. This works with Flame Blade, and you can basically stack on that fire damage massively, allowing you to also inflict the Searing Smite condition, dealing an additional 1 to 6 fire damage every turn until the enemy succeeds a constitution saving throw. Now, this is important that we're inflicting a condition here, because this is going to allow some synergy with some stuff we use later on. However, I'll get into that in a bit. Uh, you can also pick up the other two smite spells here if you want, but obviously they're a bit less on theme, and I would rather stick to Searing Smite, because it's one of the only, the only smite spells that can be upcast, dealing even more damage. So basically you would cast Flame Blade at, at uh, fourth level, getting the most damage we can out of it on this build, then use those higher level spell slots and our other spell slots to add on the fire damage with Searing Smite, and then do also damage over time. Basically, we're doing a lot of fire damage here. Next up at Paladin level 3, we're going to be getting some class and subclass features. We now can no longer be affected by disease, which is on theme because of uh, the whole death aspect. Next, we also get Nature's Wrath, allowing us to restrain enemies. Turn the Faithless, allowing us to basically use Turn Undead, but it works on Fae and Fiends instead. And also we get uh, Speak of Animals and Ensnaring Strike as our Oath spells. We also get an extra spell here, and Cure Wounds is perfectly good. A little bit of healing is quite nice. Next up a Paladin level 4, we're going to be getting our first feat, and I absolutely want to bump up our Wisdom to 18 here. However, if you wanted to go with the dual wielding option that I'm going to be presenting later, you could grab dual wielder here, or in a couple of levels, and be able to dual wield things that aren't light, which we will want to do, and gain a plus one armor class for doing it. So you could go for something like that here, but I want to take the ability score improvement first. Another option, however, maybe would be Elemental Adept, since we're doing primarily for pretty much only fire damage, although we do have some necrotic in there. But having the ability to ignore resistance to fire damage is pretty good, and also it would prevent us from rolling a 1 on the damage with our Flame Blade, so this also works. However, I mainly want to focus on our ability score improvements to make sure we're landing those hits and doing the most damage with our initial strikes. At Paladin level 5, we're finally going to be getting extra attack and also some interesting level 2 spells, including Branding Smite and Aid. This is a general spell selection you want to go with, because Aid is super useful and Branding Smite is just another option and that you could actually do at ranged if you bring a ranged weapon to this build. And with that, we're finally going to be going back to Druid now, as we don't need any more Paladin levels and I want the highest level spell slots we can get. So with that, we can now pick another cantrip, meaning we can grab Fawn Whip, allowing us to pull enemies in closer to us so we can hit them with Flame Blade. We can also gear up a few extra spells here, and for some reason, whenever I multi-class like this, it messes up my spells. So make sure you have everything you want to grab. I would kind of pick uh, this general selection. I quite like this. Um, as for your feet here, I think I am going to be grabbing, uh, this is where you want to grab either Elemental Adept or Dual Wielder, depending on your strategy. Dual Wielder, again, if you're going with the Dual Wielder strategy, but I'm going to be picking Elemental Adept here, so since we're doing so much fire damage, we want to be able to ignore resistance to it, so definitely want to be picking this up here. Next up at Druid level 5, we're going to be getting some level 3 spells, including Animate Dead and Gaseous Form 4-3. However... 
none of these spells really speak to me. I mean, we're not really maintaining concentration on any spells in particular, so something like Cool Lightning could be pretty good, so you might as well have that for big Nova damage if you want to go for it. Next up at Druid level 6, we're going to be getting another subclass feature, and this one's quite fun. This is Fungal Infestation. You get a new resource called Fungal Infestation Charges, and this costs your that and your reaction. And if you're near a beast or human humanoid corpse, you can raise them as a fungal zombie, becoming a minion that you can control. Which is kind of cool, they kind of look like they're from The Last of Us. But also, any def enemy that that zombie defeats becomes a new zombie that is allied to you, but you do not control. So you can quickly build up an undead army. Uh, and with that, we also get another spell. If we're going, since we're going Cool Lightning, we might as well grab Create or Destroy Water to be able to do that super powerful combo. Although, do note that that will make enemies resistant to fire damage, so, you know, pick and choose your battles. And finally, we fight at level 12, we're going to be getting our fifth level spell, so that's the highest we can go. Blight and Confusion for free, and we also get some extra spells here. I'm actually going to grab Conjure Man Elemental for a Fire Elemental. Wall of Fire, because it's an on theme spell that's quite good. And yeah, we'll probably stick with Cool Lightning. And that is the build. So with Flame Blade now, if we cast it, I'll enter turn-based mode. We cut the highest we can cast it while still getting bonuses, getting the bonus from upcasting is level four, meaning it will do um, four to twenty-four fire damage. So this is pretty good. Let's cast that, and it looks just awesome. It's a really, really cool-looking weapon. But of course, now if we activate our Symbiotic Entity feature, which if you see here, we gain 28 temporary hit points instead of just the 8, and we also still get that 1d6 necrotic damage, so let's click that. So now we're quite tanky, having a lot of HP overall, about 132, and also now our Flame Blade is dealing 8 to 36 damage, 4d6 fire, plus 1d6 necrotic, plus an extra 1d4 plus 2 fire. We'll get to why that's the case in a minute. And also, as you can see, we can still cast Fungal Infestation or Halo of Spores, which now does a d6. So 2d6 in this case. So overall, we have quite a powerful setup for damage. If I just end exit turn-based mode and then let the turn pass and then go back in, I can show you the Searing Smite damage. So with that, we can cast it at level 5. That's the highest we can go. And as you can see, 13 to 66 damage, dealing 46 fire from the from the blade. 1d6 necrotic from our symbiotic entity, 1d4 plus 2 from some extra stuff like I said we're going to get to in a minute, and an extra 5d6 with the potential to do even more per turn. This is how we do mega fire damage, and because it's so much fire damage stacked, that's why we wanted elemental adept to be able to ignore resistance, so we can use this big fire on pretty much anything we come across. Uh, in the combat footage you'll see later, I went for 20 Wisdom instead of Elemental Adept, but I was testing it against the tutorial boss, which is resistant to fire. So even though we were still doing a pretty, pretty decent amount of damage, all things considering, uh, this will mitigate that kind of low... Taking Elemental Adept will mitigate the low damage, the lower damage numbers you see in that combat test. But I liked, but I wanted, didn't want to really reshoot it, because I feel like the fact that we were doing as well as we did, even with resistance to fire damage, just can show how powerful this build is. But anyway, with that little tension out the way... Let's get into the equipment. So, now originally I had the Diadem of Arcane Synergy equipped, which basically would, when you inflict a condition like Searing Smite, uh, you would be able to add your uh, additional additional damage to your weapon attacks equal to your spell casting ability modifier. Unfortunately, because Flame Blade is classed as a spell, this does not work with Flame Blade. However, it does work with the dual wielding setup that I'll get into later. So first off, we have the Hat of Fire Acuity. Whenever you deal fire damage, you gain Arcane Acuity for two turns. What this does is that you have a plus one bonus to spell attack rolls and spell difficulty class per turn remaining, meaning you now get a plus two to the attack rolls you make with Flame Blade just for using it, so pretty good. Your next extra attack will deal will have a higher chance to hit. Next up, the Cindermoth Cloak. Uh, you get this in Act 3, whereas you get the hat in, I believe, in Act 1 or 2. Uh, Cindermoth Cloak, you, you can only get it in Act 3, however, it's not really necessary to the build. It just deals burn, burning to any creatures that damage you, which means they're going to be taking a little bit more fire damage every turn, about 1d4. So, not too bad. Uh, we have the Dark Justicia Half Plate. This is basically just the kind of best medium armor you can kind of get in Act 2, for this build at least. 
Uh, while obscured, the wearer has advantage on stealth checks, which doesn't really work with flame blades instead of mitts like the hey-ho. You get advantage on constitution saving throws, though, which is pretty good if you're running your constitution spells. You want this. And you also get um, a plus two bonus to uh, your armor class with shards age, as long as you cast Shield of Faith. However, you can replace this with any kind of medium armor you like that you find throughout the game. The armor of agility in Act 3 is really good. The sharp and snare uh, cuirass is really good. But I didn't really want this to be kind of wearing, like, fashion-wise, to be wearing, like, fur armor. I quite like to be um, the kind of, like, dark kind of gold and black armor we have here. I think it looks quite cool. Next up, the Flawed Hell Dusk Gloves. Ignore the name. This is just what the mod that I use to get these items names it. Uh, basically, this is the exact same as the Ford Heldus Gloves. Your weapon attacks will deal an extra 1d4 fire damage, the rest we don't care about. So, with that, we get a little bit of extra extra fire damage, which is always good. This adds on to our overall damage, and it's on theme, and these are easy to get in Act 2. Next up, the Boots of Elemental Momentum. Since we're doing fire damage with our with a spell, these boots activate, giving us momentum for two turns, basically allowing us to close in on enemies a bit easier just for attacking. However, you can swap these out for whatever you like. The Disintegrating Nightwalkers, obviously, are always a good bet. Uh, but honestly, you can, you can kind of put on whatever you like here. I would honestly get rid of these in Act 3 and grab something better. Uh, in fact, once you reach Act 3, you could actually get the Helldusk Gloves and the Helldusk Boots, as well as the Helldusk Helm. That would honestly work way better for this build overall. And obviously, we have Flame Blade as our main weapon. And for our accessories, we have the Spectator's Eyes, just to get that extra uh, necrotic spell with Wounding Ray. It just was the best thing I could find on theme that you can get early on in Act 1. And next, a Ring of Elemental Infusion. With Searing Smite... Uh, when you use Searing Smite with this, you are basically deal, or when you just attack with Flame Blade, uh, you can you're dealing damage with a fire spell, meaning that you on your extra attack you get to deal an additional 1d4 of fire damage, so you get to stack even more damage. So overall, with Searing Smite, you'd be getting just a ton of damage. However, this ring also works with the dual wielding strategy that I get to in a minute. So. If you want to go with the dual wielding strategy, replace Elemental Adept with the dual wield defeat so that you can use the Infernal Rapier alongside Flame Blade in your offhand. What this is essentially going to do is, if you swap out the, the Fire Acuity hat for the Diadem of Arcane Synergy, if you um, do Searing Smite, attacking with the Infernal Rapier to deal fire damage, inflicting the Searing Smite condition, uh, then you can... Um, then you will gain Arcane Synergy, meaning all of your weapon attacks are going to deal extra damage equal to your Wisdom modifier. So then you attack with your offhand Flame Blade, uh, triggering the Ring of Elemental Infusion as well. Basically, you can attack with the element with the Ring of Elemental Infusion from Searing Smite, and then use it again on your third attack with your Infernal Rapier as your extra attack. So you're going to go attack, offhand attack, uh, extra attack. And because the Infernal Rapier uses your spellcasting ability modifier for the attack and damage rolls, I know it only says attack rolls, but it does also count the damage rolls. Uh, it's just a bit weird with how it's shown in the tooltip. It might be bugged. Uh, basically, you're going to be doing a ton of damage with this build overall. Be being able to do three attacks per turn, all of which fire damage, all of which necrotic damage, some of it piercing if you go with the dual wielding route. And also, you know, you also get to summon a uh, Cambion for free as well. But honestly, overall, I wanted to build this more as a um, Flame Blade only build, which is why I didn't showcase a dual wielding strategy here. But I figured I would mention it regardless, as I'm pretty sure people would bring it up if I didn't. So this is how I would dual, do dual wielding on this build. Um, but yeah, I believe I've mentioned everything. I think that is me done. So yeah, overall, this was a really interesting build to make. I really, really wanted to use Flame Blade, and I feel like the way I've kind of showcased it here is an interesting and unique take on the idea where mixing in that necrotic damage, and since we're going with Druid anyway, there's no reason not to take spores uh, for the extra damage it would grant us. I feel like being able to combine Flame Blade with our Symbiotic Entity and Searing Smite just have that really big, really cool attack that does a ton of damage, it just felt cool. But I mean, obviously, you have other options here as well. Divine Smite in s itself is technically still going to do more damage, although I kind of just wanted to be like, hey, you know, we're not just using um, Divine Smite and we're doing something different. But obviously, Divine Smite is there. If you run into something that is uh, resistant to fire and you don't have Elemental Adept, you can go with Divine Smite. And in fact, you may prefer that overall. I mean, play around with the levels with this, but I just really wanted to show off this interesting combo. And obviously, we get the other effects from uh, Symbiotic Entity as well, like being able to uh, raise the dead and create a little army for ourselves. 
uh, being able to summon even more, you know, doing heavy necrotic damage with things like Blight, and also all the other extra stuff that we get from Paladin and Druid mixed together, because it's actually a fun mix. I like mixing the smites with symbiotic energy. It just feels fun and thematic and cool. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to do it for me. A um, couple of housekeeping items I think I'll just get out of the way if I remember everything I want to say. Um, still working on the 1000 subscriber kind of video. I, I, I mean... At this point, it's going to be like, I'm going to keep like being like, oh, I want to do this, but oh, I want to do this, but oh, I want to do this. Oh, but that might not be really good. Or this could be, eh, I don't know. And to, and it, before I know it, we're probably going to be at like 2000 and it's going to kind of be a mute point because <laughs> we're already at 1200, which is insane to me. Uh, you guys are killing it. Um, the other thing, though, and it's and I kind of want to talk about you know, I, people seem to like it when in my um, Phantom Arcane Trickster build, uh, when I talked about YouTube analytics, uh, I kind of want to go over that here again. Because I found out something interesting. So yesterday I uploaded my uh, next Halloween, my other Halloween video, which was the Mystery Inc. Scooby Gang, which was a full party build showing off four different builds. Um, probably not going to be doing that again. Uh, a lot of people were requesting other full party builds in the comment of that video, which was awesome. But I kind of stated at the end of the video that full party builds are way more time consuming and a bit harder to make as videos as well as, you know, um... Just overall, it, like, in-game as well, they're a bit more... And, like, theory crafting and everything, she can't repeat items and yada yada yada. It's a bit tricky. If I'm going to do a uh, full party builds, they will be separate videos from now on. Because, because the fact that I used a different thumbnail for that video, uh, and the fact that the video was way longer, it was actually my worst performing video in a long time. Uh, out of all of my actual build videos, it is the worst performing I've ever done. And again, I don't really care about the metrics, but when I feel like that, um, you know, I put in quite a lot of effort to get that video done, only for it to basically be my worst performing video, it kind of stung a little bit. Um, but regardless, I'm just going to kind of throw it out there that I'm probably not going to be doing like full party builds again in a single video. As much as some people liked it, it appears a lot of other people didn't. So I think from now on, if I'm going to do full party builds, they are going to be separate videos for each character, in which case then I can spend more time on each character. But feel, so feel free to suggest full party builds if you want to. Um, but uh, regardless, that's kind of just where my thoughts are at and I kind of wanted to mention it. And last up, of course, as I mentioned in my last video, my next video is going to be my uh, Maleki build, but my next big deity build. And so we're getting another druid, but obviously this build is going to be quite different to the one I've just showcased. So hopefully it all works out. Uh, but anyway, that is going to do it for me. I hope you all enjoyed the video and I will see you all next time.